All right. Hello, everybody. Nobody. Uh, but yeah, I am going to be playing some fine American Carmen in uh, Carmen San Diego games today. Uh, celebrating the Fourth of July, the uh, only way I know how. Uh, and I got my "What Happens When" for where in the past. Where in America's past is Carmen San Diego? I think it's a later one, technically not 80s. Uh, and I got my good old Fodor's Broderbund edition USA uh, for where in the USA is Carmen San Diego, which I played last time. But I figure I will start with uh, the most famous, the most uh, renowned of all Carmen San Diego games. Yes, that's right. It is where in North Dakota. Is Carmen San Diego, as you can see here. Uh, so this was provided to me by the great Frank Cifaldi, who I do not know particularly well, uh, but who is very generous. I just asked him on Twitter, uh, told him I was teaching his class, and uh, sent me not just the discs, which I think I can actually find online now, but also, more importantly, the um, teacher's guide uh, that they put, or the well, the teacher's guide. Uh, which is interesting, but probably more background, uh, but also the almanac that they put together uh, in lieu of having an actual um, North Dakota dedicated reference tome. So, assumably all the answers are in here. And I am wondering, I mean, with the rest of the Carmen Sandiego games, I'm definitely ride or die when it comes to using the original source materials, because... That's at least half the game. Uh, anyone, if you go back to the previous stream, uh, it's very exciting. It's a lot of me flipping through uh, the World Book 1985 uh, and getting distracted by fun facts. Um, but that's, you know, that is the experience. And again, I'm, I'm doing these streams uh, primarily in order to force myself to uh, play these games and vocalize what I'm thinking as I do it and have reference for myself to go back to for this class. Um, if you are another human being who is not me going back a year later watching this, uh, welcome. Um, but you're not who I'm talking to. I'm talking to future me. Uh, ooh, Ypsilanti. That's a different Ypsilanti, I'm assuming. Um, don't know what that means. Home of the Honkers. Hopefully that will come up. But right, this seems very, uh, I believe Lauren Elliott said, a little dry, uh, very, very politically in his, uh, in his interview with Cifaldi. Um, you know, the, this was put together by the teachers. So yeah, the story behind where North Dakota is coming in San Diego uh, is quite interesting. It was an attempt... Basically, my understanding is that the people who are making the Carmen San Diego games thought they could kind of engineize it, right? This is, uh, they're, they figured by this point, they're pretty, pretty standard format. Uh, we should be able to cut costs enough and make it, you know, the, the dream game, which uh, from a production standpoint is you're just inputting data uh, into a, a pre-existing format and selling it as an entirely separate product. Um, and uh, and so Doug Carlston, who was the head of Broderbund, was dubious about them uh, being able to engineize Carmen San Diego, which I don't understand. And he turned out to be right. And also, I don't understand because it does seem like a, a very standard format that you are essentially entering data into, at least from the two that I've played. Um, but for whatever reason, it didn't really work in the sense that a normal Carmen San Diego game cost them. I'm trying to remember what the interview said. Uh, 180,000 and North Dakota cost them about 100,000. Uh, and they only got paid 60,000 by the Educational Department of North Dakota or whatever to make this game. Um, and so, yeah, they, they it was an experiment that they lost money on. But as he points out, later things like some learning book series they did in the 90s, they did successfully turn into a you know, engine that the uh, game designer just sort of throws data into and then they can produce as separate products. So from a commercial standpoint, uh, they did not expect this to sell particularly well, but they were, it was, a, it was a test run to see, can we, can we sort of systematize this? And again, I, the interviews don't make it clear why it didn't work and I, I don't get it, but um, 
that was interesting and uh and yeah so the it was and as you can see it's it's gene portwood and lauren elliott designing it and i'm sure that was part of the cost is that they're using their top their top people um who designed the original game uh to make you know the north dakota version um but uh and yeah, it's on an Apple too, so it's not like the graphics could have taken that long. There's only so many pixels and colors. Um, so there's this new gang of villains. Hmm. See, this is one thing looking through uh, the materials I was a little disappointed in is that when I looked at the manual, um, which I think is kosher to show you. Um, so yeah, here is the retail manual. Were retail copies even produced this game? Unclear. Uh, I guess they're produced, they're, you know, some people have copies, but none of them actually bought them. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, so this, uh, again, unfortunately feels, it's surprising that it did cost that much because they do just seem to be cutting some corners, right? Uh, I mean, here's, these are not the villains, unfortunately. These are, uh, the teachers who helped. Um, then, yeah, I mean, unless... Like, there, maybe there's a separate scrapbook that's not in here. Uh, but as you saw, if you watched the last one, um, there's, uh, yeah, all sorts of, like, fun, you know, they take photos of uh, the employees and make up pun names. Um, and, you know, those are the villains. And, yeah, this, I, I, I don't see any of that here. Um, so Polly also supplied some really nice, I, I, the, I don't think any of this stuff is Samus Dot, but obviously I should not, uh, it's his, his stuff and I'm not, uh, distributing it. Uh, but just to show you some that, you know, there were interesting newspaper articles. Uh, it was exciting, you know, probably most exciting thing to happen in North Dakota in at least, uh, you know, six months. Um, anyway, so let's give this a shot. I know nothing about North Dakota, but that should not be a handicap because I knew nothing about any of the other geography. Um, is my weakest subject, is the Trivial Pursuit category I avoid. Uh, and, okay, that was fast. Here we go. Oh, right, 100th anniversary of North Dakota. That makes sense that they were, uh, willing to pony up a few bucks. My god, that's just terrible. Just, please make the stop. It's just, just, okay. Brutal. Okay. Cuts to you like a knife. Um, thank you, Louis Owens, for that music. Uh, what about this two? I'll worry about this two when we get to it. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll go with Jesse. Ooh, lowercase. Fancy. Uh, this is a later Apple II game. Yes. Greenhorn. All right. Let's see how the color looks. Have they, have they figured anything else out by 1989? No. Oh, my God. A brown-eyed person posing as Roger Maris <laughs> was breakdancing at the Polka Fest. Okay. Uh... That's pretty good. Um, now, Roger Maris, I know, uh, hit 61 home runs in 1961. Uh, Hall of Fame baseball player, outfielder. Uh, Low-end Hall of Fame, but did break the home run record. Uh, interesting. Okay. Don't, don't know what to make of that. Your job, track the imposter from Mandan to the hideout and make the arrest. What am I arresting for? Breakdancing at a polka thing? He didn't steal anything. Wow, North Dakota's rough. Why am I arresting this person? Also, what are the... Okay, fair enough. Welcome to Mandan. I am in honor of a peaceful agricultural Indian tribe. I'm just going to let everything go. That's the only way we're going to get through this game. Uh, connecting Mandan to Bismarck is the Memorial Bridge, which spans the Missouri River. 
just curious. That actually doesn't look bad, I gotta say. Well, except for the text, which still looks monstrous. Just unreadable. How did people... This is, uh, well, this is the screenshot when it happened, right? Um, sure. Okay. Yeah, never turn on the color. Um, investigate, use notebook, visit crime lab, go to gas station. It's a new option. Uh, anything in the manual that wants to clarify what that'll do. So here's the games we had. Each one's different, but one thing's exactly the same. The engine. Uh, go to gas station unless you go out of town. When you think, okay, so that's just, that's what I sort of assumed. Use notebook. Um, character clues. Okay, so that is the crime lab stuff, but that doesn't cost you time. Okay, this is, it's Carmen San Diego. I'm not gonna have problems. Um, <laughs> I do want to see these people in color. That firefighter looks about eight. Well, oh, that's a backwards baseball cap. That is a, a fire helmet. Sorry, man. It still looks like a backwards baseball cap. And you all have chicken pox, and I'm not going near any of you. Uh, sure. There's never been a reason to. Uh, the culprit wanted to research ski jumper Sandre Norheim, who lived in Denbig. Denbai. Okay, well... Literally, I'm going to need the almanac. So let's start with the almanac. Um, and then maybe we just go to Wikipedia and then we'll find out. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm actually kind of curious. I'm more curious. Like, yeah, I, I'm sure, you know, the answers are in here. What I'm actually kind of more curious about is, like, how much of this can you actually figure out from the world and how much of this is North Dakota history that has been lost to time? So, Sandre Norheim. Uh, and we're actually going to find out more interesting things, right? Because uh, it's not just a list of names. Um, so let's, even though it's a little less attractive, let's get out of full screen mode so I can kind of drag things in and out here. Sandre Norheim. Here we go. Born Sandre Alverson, Norwegian 19th century pioneer of modern skiing. So that's, see, that's very exciting. It's not just a ski jumper. Look at this guy. Oh God, he was born in, that is, that is excellent. That is, uh, sure, there's lots of skiing. There's a statue of him in Morgadol, but not in, what about Denbeg? Here we go. Uh, he left Norway in 1884. Um, despite inventing skiing, he, he was a ski champion. He, he made Norwegian words like ski and slalom known worldwide. So, yeah, this is actually a big deal, this guy. Um, let's see. So, emigrated, moved to Minnesota, then moved to North Dakota near Villard. Skied where he could, though the climate and flat topography offered few opportunities for downhill skiing. Uh, so then he just got religious and was buried in Deng by McHenry County, North Dakota. So, okay, this is on the scale. I think we're going to have to judge our North Dakota celebrities and facts on two scales. One, um, relevance to the world. Two, relevance to North Dakota. I would say Sunday Norheim actually scores a pretty solid, you know, a good seven uh, on the relevance to the world. You know, maybe even an eight. I mean, pioneer of modern skiing, pretty strong. Uh, popularized the word ski. Um, relevance in North Dakota. Well, he did live there when he was old and couldn't ski because it was flat and just became a Lutheran. So I'm going to give that a... Th but was buried there. So, you know, I will give that a three. Just because there's a certain anti-synergy there. All right, he did live there. But uh, anyway, so that's exciting news, though, that he wanted to research Sandre Norheim. Wikipedia does not yet exist, so you're going to have to actually go to the town in North Dakota where he died. Um, but let's investigate again. Let's question this pockmarked rancher. Uh, the geographic center of North America, you say? 
Well, that's very exciting. Um, actually, a little curious as to see how you would look that up in here. So, okay, where is... Okay, so I'm going to learn this. Uh, I'll start by doing this two different ways, and then I might just settle on one. But, okay, what would I find out? Geographic Center of North Dakota. How would you... Oh, well, it's right in there, 33. Uh, ba, 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 ba. I don't know what page... Okay, your starting page number is here. So, uh, so, add 25. Uh, so, 33 will become, what, 58? Too far. Come on. Ooh, there's a glossary of North Dakota slang. Uh, geographic... 33. Rugby. Is that a town? Sandre Norheim. Uh... Yeah, that's not what I'm really getting for Wikipedia. Rugby? Uh, Geographical Center of North America. Uh-oh. Um, uh, but right, see, this is, yeah, this is uh, probably why you got to have a real reference guide. This is, this is the great flaw of this. Whereas now, right, the other games, uh, you really don't want to play without this because it is such an integral part. This, I think, is just a better game if you're just looking up... What the hell was that? I'm not going to find out. Uh, Geographical Center of North America, right? Like, the point of these games is to sort of brush by... It's like going through a thrift store of information. Um Right, rugby snatched the title after uh, the survey is six miles west of a town called Balta, which is 16 miles west. Ooh, but there's been new calculations. So this is out of date. See, and this is the kind of right. Uh, I'm enjoying this. I think that going on Wikipedia rabbit holes about North Dakota uh, is a gleefully perverse basis for a game. That's really all I ask. Um... But yeah, their their guide it was it's a, a yeoman's effort, but there's just not anything you can do unless you're really willing to commit in a way that their budget. Yeah, that's the interesting part. It costs them. Mm. This feels like it should have been the primary expense almost. I still don't see why this game isn't just data entry. This feels exact. I mean, okay, there's some slight differences really just in the terminology and in the yeah but why so expensive uh see this is a fun fact right uh the term of the geographical center of north america but by just cutting out the continent and sticking a pin on it and seeing where it balanced that's a very charmingly simple way to do this uh right so rugby north dakota uh oh but actually apparently the pin in the cardboard cut out of north dakota method was not perfectly scientific uh and it was in a place called center uh wow it's like they knew um oh <laughs> that's very funny <laughs> rugby let the trademark for geographical center of north dakota lapse um and uh, global warming, fascinating, has pushed North America's geographical landmass south until... Uh, but, yeah, the uh, professor's method... So where is center? Is cent I guess center is also in North Dakota. Yes. Center, North Dakota is the geographical center. Oh, but this is a very nice photo. Uh, Geographical Center of North Dakota, Rugby, North Dakota. Lovely. Um, I'm learning all sorts of things. Thank you, we're in the North Dakota, Storm San Diego, and uh, Internet. Um, all right. I want to find out something about... Okay. But you're not telling me anything about them. 
See, this is the thing. Is we're okay, fine. Uh, bro, I I know it's rugby. That's overdetermined. Depart by four-wheel drive. <laughs> That's where they spent the hundred thousand dollars. Well, okay, this fancy map. So that's what North Dakota shaved like, huh? Sure. Sounds plausible. Go, 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 go. Mandan. I thought I was in rugby. I'm so confused. Welcome to rugby, the geographical center of North America. Or so they think. <gasps> it's, look, look, look. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Where's the Texaco sign? That's how I ask. Uh, rugby, named for rugby, England. Sure. Uh, was founded in 1885 and is the Pierce County seat. Um, this person just break danced. This person did not steal anything. I'm still really confused. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's where they spent 100000 This uh, incredibly slow animation. The culprit was writing a paper. This culprit is amazingly studious, is basically a grad student who is breakdancing. That's who I'm trying to arrest. Don't understand. Don't understand at all, but okay. Uh, the culprit was writing a paper about the Fur Trade Wildlife Indian Museum in Billings County. Sure. Uh, I don't know. Why not? Probably not still called that, but let's see what comes up. Uh, not the Museum of the Fur Trade. Well, you know what I forgot to add? North Dakota! Uh, listed museums. Control F for fur. Nurture. No, just fur. Fur trade. Huh. Well, interesting. Uh, well, it's in Billings County. I'm going to investigate further. The Theodore Roosevelt South Unit. Don't even know what those words mean next to each other. Let's find out. Oh, okay. It's part of the National Park. Let's see. Conveniently located along Interstate 94, it's the most visited area. The South Unit, small but bustling gateway town at Medora, is an attraction in its own right. See, uh, it's, it's got prairie dogs and bison. That oh, is lovely. Good lord! America, the beautiful. Gotta admit. Uh. This is big national park. Medora is probably where we're going. Uh, is that in Billings County? But yeah, I mean, okay. Looks nice. That's a good horse. Majestic. Look at this. Look at this majestic land. Uh, fantastic. Well, let's see if that lets us know where we're going. Yeah, Medora. Definitely going to Medora. Or, hmm. Well, I would still like, someone's got to tell me something about the person. The city restored by Harold Schaefer, a famous entrepreneur. Guessing that's Medora. But let's look up Harold Schaefer. A North Dakota businessman who founded <gasps> Mr. Bubble and invested money in the tourist town of Medora and the Medora Musical. A musical review, a bunch of Teddy Roosevelt stuff. This is this is great. Um, uh, 
Mr. Bubble, you say? <laughs> the gold seal company. Uh, no, that is not. I wonder if Mr. Bubble's the inspiration for, like, you know, Mr. Handsome, all those little Price Stone Sloan, uh, Stern Sloan books. Uh, I guess Mr. Handsome isn't one of them. You know, Ms. Chatterbox, whatever. Uh, okay, Harold, what's a little more about you? Died in 2001, sorry. Uh, invented gold seal floor wax. Uh, okay, this is, you know, okay, North Dakota. I mean, relevance to the world, six or seven, you know, Mr. Bubble. Gold seal floor wax, these are relevant products. Uh, let's say six. Uh, relevance to North Dakota, like nine. Um, did marry a South Dakota woman. So a little little askance at that. I don't know. I'm, I don't know about that sort of uh, interbreeding, but um, <laughs> Haroldine. <laughs> oh, but then he divorced her uh, three years later, and married another, assumably North Dakota woman. Uh, they, as they embraced their children as their own, and the two families were melded into one. And that can only happen with two North Dakotan families. Um, and he's the father of a former North Dakota governor. So, okay, so this guy, legit, uh, probably North Dakota's, he helped, f didn't, f uh, re he restored this town. He is a famous entrepreneur in the sense that, uh, he made Mr. Bubble. Um, so yeah, congratulations, North Dakota. Let's do it. Go into Medora. I want to go to the park. Welcome to Medora, where the West kips up, kicks up its heels. The Medora musical, all oh, right, we were just looking at that, provides a fun-filled account of life in the Old West. The Chateau de Morris. Let's check that out. good that definitely looks like a, a long house so what is it again uh a historic home built by probably teddy roosevelt uh no the marquis de morris uh is a hunting lodge and summer home and uh is a museum sure nice that's a fancy man A famous duelist and frontier ranchman. <laughs> Anti-Semitic politician. God. <laughs> North Dakota. Uh, home. So did he move there? He resigned from the cavalry and... Okay, yeah, he moved there to be a rancher. And get away from everybody, but especially Jews. Uh, and then went back... And something about Vietnam, my eyes are just unwilling to read it at this point. It, I bet it's good. Uh, yes, let's look, at, let's look at this horse again. That's the North Dakota I want to think about. Not weird French anti-Semite engineers or whatever. Okay, who build big houses. Uh, great. Uh-oh. I heart North Dakota. Did they just have those signs everywhere? That seems propagandistic. Uh, the suspect wanted to study the history of Cass County, where bonanza farming occurred. Okay. I mean, it's the beginner level, so, right, I should be able to... I forget when the time limit is, but... Pioneer days at Bonanzaville. Okay. I'm betting I will be able to... But West Fargo. All right, Fargo. I totally forgot about Fargo. The other thing that normal people know about North Dakota. Uh, okay. 
Um, where the past meets the future. I see the past. We can and want to host your event. Oh my god, this website. This is its own adventure. Uh, well, yeah, celebrate the 4th. There's a parade at 2 and Red River Trivia. I would be, I man, if I can get out there um, after I finish this game, I will kick ass at the trivia because... I can take a GPS guided tour of Bonantaville. Uh, and yeah, they got fireworks as they. Look at this! Nice. I mean, this is. This. This website's interesting. Someone. Some very intelligent person taught themselves how to make a website. And has never talked to another human about it. But right, the important thing is West Fargo. Here we come. Uh, but again, I know nothing about. I don't understand. Uh, when do I learn that this breakdancing grad student had red hair or whatever? God, that's a long trip. God, this must be the most. Um, welcome to Fargo, North Dakota's largest city, the home of Ref Rough Rider winners Roger Maris and Judge Ronald Davies. Roger Maris looking good there. Let's let's see him in full color. Not bad. Just ignore all the text. Uh, I hope you don't think I'm Cupid. Uh oh. What is going on? Uh oh. But I didn't get a single piece of information about this person despite looking pretty assiduously. Oh no. But I don't have a warrant. got away yes because no one told me a single identifying detail yeah and I'm fine with that because Buffy Lowe did nothing wrong Carmen's gang didn't pull a caper they just danced in a non-Caucasian way at a Caucasian dancing event. What is going on? Sure. I am enjoying learning about North Dakota. Okay, so this time I am investigating every single place. Yeah, I agree. I am a greenhorn. A brown-eyed person. Okay, I think it did give me some deep. Okay, it has actually stolen something. Posing as Minnie Craig, stole the hump from Camel Hump Dam. Maybe that's where I'm supposed to... That, uh, from Beach of the Hideout, okay. Is the posing as Marjorie Marius posing as Minnie Craig thing meaningful? Welcome to Beach. It's a very aspirational name. Okay. We know they have brown eyes. We know nothing else. Yeah, posing as Minnie Craig. Well, don't know who Minnie Craig is, so maybe let's uh, start there. Oh, oh, the first female speaker of a state house of representatives. Mrs. Craig watches every move that is made is ready to blast any presumptuous manner member with the cold, withering gaze that the members know so well and dread so much. Uh, a reputation as a serious and meticulous legislator.
I can I can see it. Heretic Rebel. First gal with a gal. Um, all right. So they're posing as Mini Craig. Should narrow it down. Um, so does that tell us that there is is gender? Uh, gender's not in this one. Progressive. Um, but yeah, that uh, and, and wait, I put in brown eyes. Don't make me remember this. Okay. Welcome to Beach, the state's westernmost city. Beach is an area known for farming, ranching, and rugged scenery. On the land south of Beach grows some of the last original sagebrush in North Dakota. All right, I'll bite. How did you get your name? This is just like hitting the random button on the Wikipedia and uh, just it always brings you to North Dakota. Okay, named for Captain Warren Beach. Fair enough. That makes the most sense, I suppose. All right, question the bus driver. We've learned the imposter observed. So is impersonating Minnie Craig a crime? Oh, right, they stole the camel's hump or something. Uh, observe field mice and garter snakes while hiking. And Wanda researched the dam that formed Lake Toshida. But we know they like hiking. That did not work. Sport. Hiking. Okay. Let's see here. Lake to sheep. God, another lovely, lovely location. I mean, in its scrubby way, but I do, I, I admire the scrub, the scrub land. Uh, the heart butt, heart butt dam. Sounds like a very small child trying to swear. Uh, a dam in Grant County of southwestern North Dakota. Lake Tachita is the reservoir created by the dam. The name Tachita comes from the first mayor of Glen Ullen, North Dakota, who, which is, I assume, where I'm going to be going. Let's visit the crime lab, though. I do, uh... Insufficient data. No warrant issued. Suspects follow. Sunny flowers. Buffy low. I... Given all the uh, materials that Sapaldi has, I really doubt there is a uh, a scrapbook with um, the fun the fun villains. I think they cut this corner. Oh well. Okay. Uh, best, uh, did I already talk to this person? What city is fifty miles west of Bismarck? Well, I think we know where we're going. But let's look at the map. They keep getting one viewer and they keep disappearing. You would think that if you pop in, I probably found it just do the retro tag and, you know, look, it says we're in the North Dakota's crime in San Diego. You know what you're going to get. Uh, although, actually, hmm, did not change it on Twitch. Let's do that now. Why are you making me log in? Uh, and now I got to uh, get a security code. Fantastic. Uh, uh. All right. Streaming a retro, as one does. Oh, well, it does say Carmen San Diego. So it's fine. People should know exactly what they're getting into. 
they're watching this. Anyway, we were trying to figure out the city that's 50 miles west of Bismarck. Even though I think we already know that's going to be, well, we're at Beach. I don't know how long a mile is here. I guess they show us up here. So that, <laughs> so nothing significant enough to show up on the map. Uh, well, need a better map. Glen Ulin, looking good. That looks like about 50 miles. Do, do, yep, Glen Ulin it is. To the gas station. <laughs> and I'm learning where things are. Welcome to Glen Ulin, West River Country. Beautiful Lake Tushita is located south. Look at that cow. All right. Let's see if this is the, the actual cow that shows up when you Google Glen Ulin. Okay. I've got that. The public school is the home of the Bearcats. It has 20 children, tops. Uh oh. Yeah, not a, a huge imprint on the world here, but it is very nice. Look, it's a nice little town. West Dakota. Wait a minute. Is there a whole state I don't know about? Okay, so let's question the librarian. Uh oh. Yeah, man, these I heart no Dakota signs are everywhere. A vile henchman. I must be on the right track. All right, we're investigating. Okay, the culprit want to research wood hawks who chopped wood, so not literal hawks, for steamboats on the Missouri River. Keep that in mind. I'll look at a map of North Dakota, but trade your beaver pelts. Well, clearly on the Missouri River. The bourgeois house. That's where my mom lives. Uh, let's see here. So lots of lots of clues to go off of, uh, but I feel like the, the bourgeois house uh, doesn't really narrow it down. Bo where is the bourgeois house in North Dakota? Fort Union. Uh, let's see here. There's a nice fancy house. Um, by Janice Hurley, general subject fur trade. So sure, a trading post essentially, I'm guessing. So let's let's look up. Just make sure that we're in the right place. Fort Union, North Dakota. Uh, a most important fur trading post on the upper Missouri River. Bingo. Look at this. They got pets. Pets are welcome in most places in this town. Uh, despite the hustle and bustle. Um, okay, and I investigated all three places, and I just did not learn anything new about this villain. Um, Fort Union it is. Traveling all around the grand land of North Dakota. Welcome to Fort Union, largest fur trading post in the Missouri River. Cavalry troops were stationed at nearby military Fort Buford. So let's do a little compare and contrast here. Um, so I'm assuming that is the bourgeois house. Pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. The odd number of chimney-like things, I get that right? Okay. Um, let's investigate. Let's question the secretary. Hello. Um, the color of lignite. Don't know what that is. I can't tell. Brown coal. Brown, you're saying. The lowest rank of coal. Oof. Uh, just compressed peat. It's not coal, that's just... Okay. Um, so brown hair wants to research large lakes in the drift prairie. Yep. Brown eyes and brown hair and likes hiking. Clearly, there's only one person who fits that description. And it is... Yep. 
Nobody. Very frustrating. An Indian mission at St. Michael. Okay, well, let's look that up. How is the town not just St. Michael? Indian mission at St. Michael. The, the imposter thought the strudel was delicious. There's our culprit. The Edward House at Camp Grafton. Okay. I should probably take notes because I am losing track of things here. Uh, let's start there. Uh, Edward House Camp Grafton. Not auto completing to any extent. Um, the Edward House's history. Lovely. Uh, North Dakota National Guard. Oh boy. Um, but where is it? Where are you? This seems like I'm going too deep, but now I've forgotten my other, the Edward House at Camp Grafton. Look, Camp Grafton, North Dakota. What town are you in? Camp Grafton, uh, near Devil's Lake, North Dakota, founded in 1904 as the Rock Island Military Reservation. Uh, Devil's Lake has been getting larger every year, much to the frustration of area residents, hence the name. Uh, all right, are we going to Devil's Lake? Oh, Strudel. Love Strudel. No and Nodak, North Dakotan food, German, Indian, Norsk. Is Strudel Norsk? This feels like maybe I should consult the almanac. Where do they tell me? What is North Dakotan food? Food. Fool's gold. Yeah, how are you supposed to... I don't understand this game. Uh, but... Strudel sounds Norsk. Um. Yeah, I guess we're going to say Norsk. Now let's visit the crime lab. I guess it isn't. Brown eyes, brown hair. I guess German. Oh, Strudel is German. What am I doing? But still no match found. Very confused. They told me that hair the color of lignite. Definitely hiking. Definitely brown eyes. Lignite. It's brown. That is the whole... Often known as brown coal. And I'm positive they said lignite because I don't know that word. Did I mess this up? Uh, oh. <sighs> mm. 
This is a, an inferior game. Um, fine. Go to Devil's Lake, I guess. See, if I had the scrapbook that gave me the list of these people. It's just infuriating. Uh, oh, no. Uh, yeah, I guess I should sleep. Um, look. Strudel. German. Maybe also North Dakotan, but you really think of it as German. Or, or Norse, if you're me and don't know what you're talking about. Okay, maybe Lignite is black? It just needs this to connect with someone. Okay. Mm. Let's do it. Let's arrest Sunny Flowers for stealing the camel's hump or whatnot. Devil's Snake Lid of Phyllis Frelick became the first deaf person to win a Tony Award. The goose capital of the world! Okay, wait. Before we move on, before we capture any, uh, any malefacting North Dakota in it. Well, it does complete. Yeah, I think a lot of people claim they're the goose capital of the world. For instance, Sumner, Missouri seems to outrank uh, Devil's Lake, North Dakota. Yeah, I'm not seeing Devil's Lake really coming up here. I'm really seeing... Uh, oof. That is a... Okay, it's sort of auto-completed there. The perch capital of the world. It's very different. The largest body, natural body of water in North Dakota. Um, perch or goose? Make up your mind. I mean, I see the geese. Uh... Oh, good. Oh, we missed the commission meeting. Um, I want to I see some nice... Uh, come on. Let's see what this lake looks like. That's fine. Just keeps rising. It's not good. All right. Let's see if we've actually got the right person. Well, we got somebody. Mm -hmm. Sunny flowers brought to justice. Maybe. Maybe I got the wrong person. I guess we'll find out. Huh? Let's see this one. Blazing for color. Why are you waving a handkerchief? What is going on? Congratulations. You have caught the culprit. The citizens of Beach are grateful. You have unmasked sunny flowers posing as mini Craig and righted all of their wrongs. They stole a hump? I don't remember what they did. Fantastic. I could do one more, sure. I am enjoying learning about North Dakota despite the uh, deficiencies of the investigative model. I have been identified. Still a greenhorn. All right. Uh, ooh, we got three viewers in the chat, so if anyone has any questions about North Dakota, I'm now an expert. Uh, happy to answer. A brown-eyed person posing as John Burke was seen stealing water from the Bois de Sioux River. Okay. Well, yes, the entire game is in North Dakota. This is where North Dakota is coming San Diego. Uh, not unlike Suffy and Stevens, uh, the first of a projected 50 that did uh, not turn out to happen. Um, 
yeah, this is uh, this was uh, I was saying at the beginning when literally nobody was watching uh, that this was an attempt by Broder Bunt to see if they could like engineize Carmen San Diego and make it kind of like we just sort of enter the data and can do you know ones relatively cheap and it turned out for reasons I'm not clear on that it didn't work that way that it cost them a hundred thousand dollars as opposed to like 180 thousand for you know the full games so it wasn't enough of a savings uh, to be profitable given the market size for where North Dakota's car in San Diego but apparently schools in North Dakota did use this game until like basically all their Apple II's died in the late 90s or whatever uh, so a, a cult classic um, I am finding that the most interesting thing about it by far is that with the traditional Carmen San Diego games, I, I think there basically is necessary to go on Amazon and spend the, you know, six dollars or whatever uh, to get the uh, original reference material because that's kind of half the game right there, right? That it really is about the interaction between the software and these books. Uh, with this one, though, uh, the teachers. Uh, so basically, you know, Brother Bun didn't know anything about North Dakota, so they, they had a teachers group uh, who were uh, put together to, um, yeah, kind of find out all the fun facts. And they put together this almanac that, as you can see, this almanac is very, it's like the note for a draft of the almanac. It is not, it is not fun. You're not going to get lost in a rabbit hole. Uh, like you are with one of these actual reference guides. So I think that's really, in a way, what kills it more. Uh, I really think they could have turned this into an engine because this game plays pretty much exactly like Where in the World on Apple II. Um, it does just seem mostly like that entry. Uh, but yeah, without a real reference guide, so, so I'm taking this one on uh, by actually just using the internet. Uh, and I think that's, it's actually a pretty interesting game when you do it that way. Like when you're doing, instead of sort of general world knowledge, uh, being filtered through trying to figure out how to look things up in, you know, the world book or whatever, uh, insanely specific knowledge that you're finding on the internet. It's pretty interesting. You know, I'm, I'm having fun. I'm learning about North Dakota. The guy who invented skiing, uh, moved there, but it was flat. So he didn't ski anymore. That was exciting. Uh, some very nice lakes, seeing some nice uh, images, you know, and just, yeah, sort of like being, uh, it is being force-fed a Wikipedia rabbit hole. It's, it's edifying. Perfect for this 4th of July. Anyway, where are we? Brown-eyed person posing as John Burke. Okay, so first step. I don't think this matters at all, um, but who is John Burke? John Burke is a, is a televangelist of some kind who writes books. No. Uh... John Burke, 10th governor of North Dakota and the treasurer of the United States. Uh, that looks like a North Dakota if I ever saw one. Um, <laughs> Keokuk County, Iowa. Uh, I've only known of that because at some point Robert Crumb calls someone another schmuck from Keokuk. Uh, and uh, supported Woodrow Wilson. That's just well. Uh, supported by William James Bryant, uh, justice on the North Dakota Supreme Court. Okay, so, very important man. Um, and this person has brown eyes, was stealing water from the river. Okay, the crimes that they're coming up with, I mean, one of them, the first one was literally breakdancing at a polka festival. That was the crime. So, uh, okay, but the boy to sue... Brown-eyed person, your job, track the imp So the crime is really being a famous imposter. Okay. Track them from Wapiton to the hideout and make the arrest. You must apprehend them by Thursday, 3 p.m. I'm guessing, yes. You always get exactly six days. Good luck to me. All right. Welcome to Wapiton, the village of leaves. The city of lights is also, also famous for the Chahan, Chahin Kappa Park Zoo. Lovely. Okay. Uh, I'm kind of curious. I mean, the village of leaves and the city of lights. Um, that, sounds, that sounds lovely. Uh, the Sussex Wanda book about Golden Valley County. That is not an exciting clue, but let's see where that leads us. 
Um, well, there's one in Montana, so you're not so special. Um, population 884. The county seat is Rygate. I'm guessing that's where we're going. There's the most exciting thing in the town, the Grace Lutheran Church. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, but let's see if we can find out more personal details. We know they got brown eyes. <laughs> what well, Peden is the Paris of... They asked if it was legal to hunt sage grips. The Paris of North Dakota. I don't know. Actually, we did see the bourgeois house. There were some, there were some fancy old houses in North Dakota. There was some uh, incredibly anti-Semitic French man who moved there and built a large house. That was lovely. Um... Okay, legal to hunt sage grouse. So, okay, let's let's input. We know you have brown eyes, and we know you like just straight up hunting. I guess. Okay, fair enough. But maybe that's also telling us to go to where you can hunt sage grouse. The Montana state line. Uh. Is not the Montana state line. Hmm. Okay. Does that lead me anywhere? Um. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe I will have to consult their. Uh, well, it's not beach. What else is in Golden Valley? So it's not Rygate. Um, how many towns can there be? There's Labina, Barber, Belmont. None of these are there. And it's not on the state line. So I'm very confused as the whole Golden Valley. Fascinating. Uh, well, let's let's look up Watford City. Where are you located in North Dakota? Are you on the state line? You are on the state line. Do you have a lot of sage grouse hunting? But then, what was the thing about the Golden Valley? Seventeen hundred and forty-four people. Sure, humongous compared to. Um, I don't think Beach, North Dakota was on the... We've already been. Uh, oh, it is in Golden Valley. Oh, it is. All right. It was very west. 1,019 people. There we go. There we go. Why didn't that tell me that... Are there two Golden Valley counties? I'm so confused. Oh, Jesus. Wait. Oh, my God. Okay. What a, what a baffling place. Anyway, back to Beach. Named after Harold Beach or some such. Uh, right. Not a place with a beach. Shockingly. For North Dakota. Welcome to Beach, the state's westernmost city. The national famous Champions Ride Rodeo takes place at the home on the range in our natural arena. Champions Ride Rodeo. Look at that metal lock. All right, let's question the grocer. Mm-hmm. The Sioux Uprising. Oh, that's interesting. In the Red River Valley. Pony Express rider who delivered mail to a fort. And they, imposter, completed an eight second ride. Oh, a rodeo. Okay, so Pony Express, so their hobby is rodeo. Their sport is rodeo. The hunting was at something else. Yeah, this one feels a little sloppier. Um,. But okay, brown eyes and rodeo. How many, how many people could that be? Oh, right. You have to press return. Um, I forget what the clues were, but there were two of them about the Pony Express. So let's Google that.
Uh, oh, Bismarck. We haven't been to Bismarck yet. Uh, let's see. What was its route? Uh, okay. A lot of places it went. Where's North Dakota? Uh, Dakota. Not found. Great. What was our other clue? But it, there's no Bismarck. Uh, okay. Pembina, North Dakota. Pony Express. Official uh, must include pony. Come on, man. Must include pony. Uh, the Red River. I think that was the other reference. The Gateway to the Dakotas. Oh, right. The Sioux. It was attacked by the Sioux. That was the other thing. So definitely for Abercrombie is where we're headed. God, we just keep back and forth across this incredibly long and tedious flat state. Beach? Oh, here we go. Fort Abercrombie, the first military post in the territory, located deep in the heart of Indian country. Great. The fort was known as the safest place for settlers in the Dakota Territory. Okay. Uh, let's question this bus driver. The imposter wanted to research the city called Gateway to the West. For fish biting on the Green River. Gateway to the West. Green River. Road construction on I-94. God, that's an exciting clue. Uh, I can't spell, apparently. Green River. Uh, a tributary of the Heart River. It looks majestic. Um, joins the heart near Gladstone. Well, but Gladstone's not where we're going. It's, but we're going near Gladstone. So what's near Gladstone? 239 people. Good God. This is breaking my brain. More people than that live in my building by far. Not even that big a building. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to do the math right now. Around that many people, I think, live in my building. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Well, where can we go? Okay. Well, let's look at Stark County, I guess. What else is in Stark County? Dickinson. There we go. Let's take a look at that. That's a fancy courthouse. I bet that wasn't even built in 1989. It's too scientific. And back across the entire state again. Welcome to Dickinson, Queen City of the Prairie. Dickinson is located in the Mountain Time Zone, while the eastern two-thirds of the state is on Central Time. Um, I'm going to visit the Crime Lab, just in case. I've got time. Enter my crime notes. Insufficient data. Could be Agriculture, or Cheyenne Vale, or CR Parks, or Ellie Vader. I know nothing. Mm, this is this is an infuriating game. Um, okay, let's question the rancher. What? I don't have nearly enough information to. Uh, yeah, this game is very stingy compared to the previous ones. Okay, I'm going to travel all the way back because that's the only way I have. 
But I already got all of this. Ugh. Yeah, I'm guessing the and back across the city again. Right, so what I'm doing now is, is backtracking to try to find one last... That, okay. I give up! I give up! Why, yeah. I was in Wapiton, right? And I think I'm going to be out of time. The city of leaves. What? Useless. I can't even get to where I need to go. Yeah. See, this is the thing. I do enjoy... Yeah, and I'm out of time. I'm out of time. Why don't even, what are you doing? <sighs> it's really, un right, that is not a, uh, they make this part hard okay you took too long right there's there's no 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 you have you have annoyed me for the last time all right my verdict is that that is a fascinating experience and I'm glad I had um, and that, uh, yeah, as a, as a contrast to the ones where you use, uh, you know, a book or whatever, um, Googling about some weirdly specific uh, place where every town has 200 people in it um, is pretty fascinating. Uh, but, yeah, for some reason, they made the, in the, like, find the identifying details part, like, there's no skill to that. I mean, the current San Diego games have never had, like, you just, the skill is looking stuff up. Right? There's really no way to strategize um, on, am I going to get a clue, blah, blah, blah. Um, it just kind of happens or it doesn't happen. Um, and, you know, my game design philosophy is if something doesn't have any skill to it, at least make it easy. Um, and that's fine. Uh, like, I've played plenty of games. Uh, I don't know, I was playing Wander Song recently. Wander Song is a fine game, uh, but it's not actually a good game game in the sense that like its mechanics are kind of bland and don't really do much uh with anything with the whole music uh as puzzle solving or whatever but it's like it's not hard and it's pleasant and you and you do it and it's done uh and the story and all the other stuff about that game is real nice so you know it's not uh it's not a big problem uh whereas here you have uh this investigation thing which has always been essentially skillless and in this one it's just we are leap punitive. Okay, so anyway, moving on uh, for our 4th of July celebration of uh, USA. Uh, we're going to play a little of what is this one? I think Where in America's Past is Carmen San Diego. Uh, and I just need to locate my file. Uh, but I think I'm going to do this on the Amiga. Because uh, the Amiga versions are generally just a little nicer, and while like the Apple II stuff is uh, is great, uh, and obviously North Dakota did not come out on anything else, uh, or maybe I'll be doing it on DOS because that seems to be the only version I have. Um, okay, this might take me a minute because I have not actually used uh, a Boxer in a little bit uh, since I updated everything, so I'm going to take a small break. Uh, use the bathroom, get another seltzer, 
uh, back in five to ten with uh, yeah, where in America's past is Carmen San Diego.
All right, I am back in action, hydrated, caffeinated, all nine yards. Uh, so yes, next up on our July 4th agenda, we're in America's fastest prime in San Diego. As Piss Plays points out in the chat, a fun thing with nothing possibly traumatic about it, uh, I'm sure. Oh, and uh, one interesting thing here is that that is kind of the modern understanding of Carmen. She didn't really look like that in the earliest games. Uh, if you look at the Where in the World is Carmen San Diego um, manual, let me see if I can find her in this. Um, I mean, you know, got the hat with the band. Uh, and you can't, it's in black and white or green and white. Um, but yeah, I feel like her look, her trademark look evolved a little bit. Um, these guys are looking hilarious. Uh, America's Fast is all about the Old West, clearly. Um, all right. So yeah, <laughs> I am definitely interested in a sort of Howard Zinn remake. Um, maybe, uh, maybe Trevor Strunk can organize the new the the new leftist uh, version of Carmen San Diego. Um, ooh, there's now a crime dog. Well, that's an advance. Um, let's see. Not designed by any of the original designers. That's fine. Um, but, uh, you know, got some old-timey stuff here. Great. Um, ooh, Sound Blaster. Got to make sure to enable that. Uh, I have a Chrono Skimmer. Okay, so we're, we're getting... There might even be new mechanics. Who knows? Um, Da, 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 da. I'm going to assume this is all pretty much the same. And yes, here's what we've come here for. Uh, Broderbund employees posing as criminals. Lucinda Bolts. Uh, that's good. I just, I didn't even get that until I said it out loud. Lucinda Bolts. Very good. Hmm. Maybe, maybe less good. Uh, let's see. Um... I see. Just making up for the sale of Manhattan. When is this? I think this is 1991. Yeah, it's right around the time that the, the TV show came out, which I look, recommend looking up on YouTube. Quite a fun game show. Uh, you got your Rockapella, um, Homer the Brave, uh, St Stanley Cup, uh, retired hockey player, uh, good. And see, now we'll have all of the information that we need uh, to find them. Mom's the word. Uh, the, the word disorganized. The carrot topped. I don't know. Really? I guess that could be red hair. Not really carroty. That could be carrot topped. Uh, Mardi Gras. Um, let's see. Delicatessen. Very nice. Road a lot of miles. Ah. A bike messenger from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Okay. Idols are Chuck Yeager, Billie Jean King, and Igor Takanov. Leaf Malone. I guess Leaf Meal? Leave Me Alone, maybe? Uh, Laverne Onions. I don't get that one. Shlomo Replay. <laughs> I give, I give, that's, uh, on Kibitz TV, um, no oh boy, Sherbo from Kentucky used to photograph the young Cassius play who once knocked Shlomo silly when he came into a bit too close, is that, uh, wow, fill her up, uh, and good old Carmen San Diego, looking good. Um, hey, what? That's a little anticlimactic. Why are these people? Why is Niles Crane hypnotized? What is going on? Oh, he is a department. <laughs> okay, he's literally a department store mannequin. I feel like Carmen should be at the end. Anyway, here we go. What happened when? Okay, that is not what happened when. 
what happened when. Available in used bookstores, pretty cheap. For some reason, not a hot item at this point. A reference guide to America, written in 1991. Um, all right, so let's get going. Uh, okay, I guess, let me change this. Where in America's past is Carmen San Diego? And 91 or 92, close enough. Um, and I have this open, and then I close it. There we go. Let's do it. Yep. Launch every time. get out of full screen. Wait, let me out. Wait, no. Uh oh. Am I trapped? How do you? Oh, right. Command click. Turn us up a little. We've got Sound Blaster. Same sort of fake Peter gun. <laughs> nice. As usual, I'm on Carmen's side. Uh oh, she's gonna see us gold. He stole my gold. Not the torch! Is that a helicopter? Sounds like a helicopter. The whole statue? What a fiend. Yeah, I don't think... Okay. Look, if you can do that with a helicopter, you, you own it. You deserve it. Who can stop her? Not me. Oh, there's a whole story here. When do I meet the talking dog? One nice thing is I don't think Carmen San Diego ever went extreme 90s. But, you know, you gotta have a talking dog. All right, I can do that. Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there you are. Why so mean? What? That that Chrono Skimmer. Stop him. Okay. Hmm. That does make me wonder if there's some um, setting I should do in terms of 386 speed. I don't know. What did people have in 1991? You know, like a 386 was normal by that point? I don't know what it says on the box. I mean... Okay, let's slow down to AT speed and see what happens with that. It's too slow, I'll speed it back up. Uh, we have intercepted a tri time patrol crime alert. Sure. Time Sweep has revealed that Carlsbad Caverns has been stolen from New Mexico in 1930. That is not a... T that is technology far beyond time travel. How do you steal caverns? I mean, if a man was seen leaving the scene of crime. Sure. The federal time... Like, in Where in the World in Carmen San Diego, they were fairly plausible. I think maybe you saw the Taj Mahal once. But at least that's a object. Okay. 
49 hours of use of the Acme Chrono... Yeah, right, because I don't exactly have a time limit, but I do have only 49 hours of use for apprehending this criminal. Okay. So he saw Carlsbad Caverns in 1930. I don't... Okay, I'm, I'm here in 1930. Prepare your Chrono Skimmer for a jump to the southwest, 1926-1950. This seems about the right speed. During the Great Depression, farming income declined 60%, and one-third of American farmers lost their land. That was sad. All right. Poor land management. Treated losses in the southwest. The grassland had been plowed up. When drought hit, winds blew the tops all right. The dust bowl. Oh, okay. So now what? Um, check my email. Okay. That didn't take any time, at least. Search. Ask bystander, consult source, or listen in. All right. Thanks, Piss. Uh, yeah, it'll be up as a file. Uh, and I put everything up on the YouTube stream also, if you want to see the previous uh, Where in the World or whatever. Uh, but yeah, uh, I finished my summer class. So, 80s games, ride or die. Thanks for watching. Do you want to see Fort Sumter on the eve of the Civil War? That's perverse. Um, he had eyes the color of a four-leaf clover. Uh, Warren. Okay, so we know that. Fill her up. Doesn't look anything like his uh, photo. Um, who was the one that made me laugh too much? Or Shlomo? Shlomo replay. Doesn't like jewelry, but he loves the ring. Oh, right. Boxing? We'll figure it out. Uh, right. So he wanted to see Fort Sumter. Or she. On the, I think I thought maybe they said it was he. Uh, on the eve of the Civil War. Which sounds terrible. Let's consult source. Visiting South Carolina, which just seceded from the Union. And listening. He must be crazy to want to fight with General Grant in the 1864 Battle of Petersburg. Okay, I mean, let's, let's consult. So, 1864. Uh... A presidential election while the Civil War was being fought posed special problems. Fair. In the North, there's considerable dissatisfaction in the progress being made in defeating the Confederacy, so Lincoln did not think his chances of re-election were good. Um, okay. Um, but what am I looking at here? What am I trying to find, right? We're on map. So, am I just zeroing in on a time period? Is that how this works? Because I know I'm in the south in this zone. I don't need anything deeper. Okay. Well, that's forgiving. Uh, I'm not going to editorialize too much because we'll be here forever. Um... But I'll just I'll just let this sit. Southern states believed they were executing, exercising their constitutional right in seceding. The North held that their action was an illegal rebellion. Well, that's one way to put it. Uh, what do we got here? So this seems okay. He wants to meet up with a British captain in 1579 on the West Coast. He said his favorite athlete set a world record in the broad jump. Okay, wait. So 
favorite athletes in the world record in the broad jump. See, this is the kind of clue that I feel like you can reverse engineer from. Or is, is this actually in this stuff? Jesse Owen seems like a pretty good bet there. Green eyes and loves Jesse Owens. Skip to Malou. Which guy is Skip to Malou? Or a gal. Uh, oh, it's the mannequin. Um, the vacuous air of his emerald green eyes. All right. Fair enough. Um, of course, I've completely forgotten the other clue. Something about Western sellers have real appetite for recent news of the American Revolution. Okay. Welcome to West Coast or Francis Drake Committee. Well, that certainly narrows it. Right. Oh, that's interesting. It sort of changes. Well, that's good. Get to see when things become states. But I'm not picking an individual, right? I'm just saying west. About then. <laughs> During this period, Spain controlled a region known as California. It built missions, converted the Indians to Christianity, and tried to make them loyal servants to the Spanish Empire. How'd that go for you? Uh-oh. What is happening? What just happened? What was that about? He went to Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, by a bike from two brothers. And his favorite artist was a photographer. See, this one's over helpful. Um, I am very clear on who it is already. Uh, but thanks. Okay, Kitty Hawk. Um, I mean, I should know that, right? I should. I know it's in Virginia or North Carolina or one of those kind of mid Atlantic. Whatever. Uh, not going to claim to be great in history. Uh, Kitty Hawk is a carrier. That is not helpful. Um, and yeah, I, I'm only going to use this. Aristoteles says he's going in 1925 to help Clarence Darrow question William Jennings Bryan. So wait, is it. Is that Virginia as well? Uh, Scopes Monkey Trial? Is that going to be in the index here of what happened when? When did the Scopes Monkey Trial happen? I'm assuming 1925, but where did it happen? I'm assuming Virginia, but for some reason I thought it was Pennsylvania. 1925, well, I guess, oh, right, this is in chronological order. I could have just looked at 1925. Okay, 1925. Uh, but that is very post um, Kitty Hawk, but of course my map. Right, I don't need to be that specific. This is the key my thing I keep forgetting. You just kind of need to be in the the ballpark, right? What counts as east? Yeah, they're not counting. Like, it only goes as far as Maryland. Like, south is Virginia and down. I mean, it's right on the cusp here, though. And the Kitty Hawk thing is earlier. <laughs> I'm gonna go for it. <laughs> Jazz! Jazz music that swept the nation in the 1920s was developed in the South by black musicians and adopted by whites. Something that had never happened before or since. The dance called the Charleston originated in South Carolina during this period. I feel like I'm in the right place, right? 
It's taking, it's, it's loading. There we go. Dun, dun, dun. Wow, those henchmen play tough. Uh-oh, so I think I've won because I have a warrant. Ah, here's the Acme crime dog. There he is, the old Skip to Malu. To Malu. Oh, right, he had stolen the caverns. I forgot. Um, this is certainly and a promotion. One more clue. Use my copy to complete the following. Is this like copy protection? How would you play this? Uh, well, I mean, you could just know things, I suppose. Uh, October 17th, 1829. The blank. Okay, 1829. Yeah, I guess it is sort of copy protection. Because this isn't fun. Um, section three. The Chesapeake and Delaware Canal was formally opened. Well done! I am now a tenderfoot. Am I ready for another case? Well, sure. These are easy. Where in America's past is Carmen San Diego? A time sweep has revealed the St. Louis Gateway Arch. I mean, okay, that's at least semi plausible. It's an object, it's not a cavern. Uh, since I'm from Missouri in 1965, I don't know what that tells me, other than I'll be going to Missouri in 1965. 49 minutes on the clock, 49 hours on the clock. Sure. The Midwest, ooh. I do like this period. Very gray and green. Uh, after World War II, the Midwest auto industry boomed. Car desires introduced tail fins inspired by the P-38 fighter plane. New cars were longer, wider, and more powerful than ever. Yes, with absolutely no sound effects. He was asked to read a, write a story about the recent Battle of the Bulge. Okay, Battle of the Bulge is World War II for the Chicago Sun-Times. Okay, well that puts him in that. We learned he plans to be a detention when Franklin Roosevelt delivers his New Deal speech in Chicago. Uh, I mean, these are it's within the same decade, obviously, but okay. Didn't matter what a, a party in Cleveland suffering DJ Day. His favorite athlete was a top money winning golfer four years in a row. That would be, I guess, Babe Dickinson. Dickerson. I've watched Drunk History. I'm knowledgeable. Um, did Rick sit? Yes, he's the only golfer. Um, and you did say his, so I feel like that. There was that time. Okay. The loot. The warrant. New cars were longer, wider, powerful. Okay. Right, we know where we're going. We are going to the Midwest. Somewhere in that zone. During the Great Depression, Cleveland, Ohio, had an unemployment rate of 50%, Akron 60%, and Toledo 80%. That's not good. Unemployed workers found their fate humiliating as well as difficult. I can't argue, I suppose. It is, I mean, I don't know. What ages is this Roy for? Like, I wonder what the precise... I'm guessing 12 is kind of the epicenter moving out, right? 12 or 13. Maybe 11. Um, and yeah, the, the educational quality of these was always in dispute in the sense that these were not designed according to, you know, who knows how uh, useful actual educational standards were or are. Uh, but right, they were games, they were marketed as games that happened to be educational, essentially. Um, and so, 
you know, do kids learn things from these factoids? I remember playing a lot of Where in the World is Carmen Diego, and I remember enjoying it. I'm not sure how much of it stuck. But, you know, I think what does stick more is the learning how to look through a reference guide less than the content itself. And that's kind of the interesting angle uh, that I try to talk about in class. Uh, maybe my, my Google skills have come from playing this. He planned to welcome Sacagawea and her explorer friends to the West Coast. Good for him. Our informant knows he's buying up Russian maps of the Pacific coastline. This is... If I were Sakajui, I wouldn't share his beach blanket. His eyes were the color of sapphires. Terrifying. Let's do it. How many blue-eyed babe Dickerson did quick is... Mm. Leaf Malone. This guy was Leaf Malone. Oh, here we go. Arr. A chip on his shoulder and a skull cross on his neck. Leaf was voted most likely to succeed. Hmm. Uh, former junior high school disciplinarian, he finally found his niche. bouncer at the gang's handout. Hangout. Della's calf A. Okay. The blonde-haired, blue-eyed, brawny ruffian also happens to be a bird lover and keeps an aviary on the roof of his apartment. Ooh, he's protecting some bald eagles. These are, you know, these are nice villains. All right, Sacagawea, the West Coast. I'm going to take a... Well, not positive I know when Sacagawea is going west or lived. 1805. Let's see what it says about her there. Do-do-do-do-do. Sacagawea, a Shoshone Indian woman, gained a place in American folklore by activities this year, the wife of the Lewis and Clark Expedition's official interpreter, Jason Charbonneau. Okay, this all sounds vaguely familiar because I did play Josh DeBonis's Lewis and Clark game a long time ago. Uh, so I should have known this. She joined the expedition was now South Dakota, not North Dakota, uh, and accompanied the party of the Pacific and part of the way back east. Uh, her presence helped convince... The Indians met in route that the newcomers were not part of a war party. Her knowledge of edible wild plants was a great help to the expedition. Uh, great. So, 1805. Let's go. During this period, Spanish Californians worried that Russians were moving in on their territory. The Russians built Fort Ross north of San Francisco, but became trading partners with Spanish Californians rather than enemies. Lovely. Uh, I genuinely do not know much about that history of Spanish-Russian uh, West Coast. What? I don't understand these henchmen. But I'm in the right place. I'm in the right 25-year period, so of course I ran into that guy on the street. He said he was going to tell the folks of the Southwest about James Buchanan's election. <laughs> Don't know why that just struck me as so funny. Um, who cares? Uh, oh, no. Okay, Buchanan, I should know this. I assume he was president from 1856 to 1860, given that he was president for Lincoln. And I don't think he was a two-termer. Um, so maybe I can save some time. Yeah, I mean, basically in that range. Yeah. And I know who it is. So let's, let's speed run this. Maybe I get a bonus. Ooh, that's exciting. During this period, great cattle drives originating in Texas and ending at railroad lines in Kansas, Wyoming, and Nebraska took place. Cowboys herded the semi-wild longhorn cattle while riding horses descend from Spanish stock. But where were they going with them? Uh-oh. Ooh. Terrifying villain. I feel like Homer gets stupider every year. He was bringing flashlights to the blacked-out city of New York in July. Wait, is this, like, modern? Is this, like, the Son of Sam? Uh, his favorite artist specializes in black-and-white photographs. I'm kind of curious as to who that is. 
Uh, I got 27 hours. Uh, Norman Rockwell, no. Andrew Wyeth, no. George O'Keefe, no. Ansel Adams. Must be Ansel. Calder. These are good artists. Uh, it's still going to be the same guy, so I'm not going to bother. Um, but right, the new... Jersey in New York blackout. Trying to ride a bobsled at the Lake Placid Winter Olympics. Is Lake Placid in New York? I really should know that. I've heard of the Lake Placid Winter Olympics. I'm pretty sure they're in New York. Ford. Oh, they just... I see. They just list the administration up top. That's helpful. Um, former Governor James Earl Jimmy Carter. Yep. Uh, an effort to restructure the U.S. intelligence unit. President Ford announces the creation of an independent board to oversee U.S. foreign intelligence operations. Next, they issued an executive order curtailing domestic surveillance of U.S. citizens and prescribing burglaries, illegal use of federal tax returns, and drug tests of unsubjecting suspecting subjects. Political assassination and foreign covert operations was also forbidden. Well, I'm sure all that stuck. Um, anyway. I think we know where we're going. But where is Lake Placid? Is it in New York? Do we have lakes? I know we have the Hudson that Lake. Um, what is this? Uh, you know, what should we call it? Winter Olympics. Yeah, they're in Innsbruck, Australia. Austria. I'm in Austria. I don't understand. Oh well, not my problem. Uh, but it's really on the cusp there. Hello. Uh, U.S. defeat of the Vietnam conflict affected Americans greatly. Years that followed, many vowed that such a war will never be fought again. No, just, just worse, just dumber wars. Um, I am in the right place, right? I am clearly in the right place. Uh oh. Wow, they are. Uh oh, the crime dog. He really doesn't factor much into this. I mean, I guess he. I just don't understand how he tracks him down within like a 25 year zone. Hey! Leaf Malone! He did not leave Malone. And good. He was hiding the arch in his uh, closet, I guess. Oh, no. No. No, I'm not. Yes. Yes, I would. Thank you. All right. I feel like that is a good place to stop. Um, it's been two hours, but I think I'll do more later today. I got nothing going on, and it's a nice day to play some 80s games. And, um, yeah, I want to, I got so many more to play to be the expert I purport to be in my class. Um, anyway, if you watch this, thank you for watching this. And uh, you can find me on Twitter if you have any questions. Have a good one.